Hallelujah, hallelujah. Once again, let's just lift up our hands and bless his holy name. We're gradually coming to the end of the month of November. This is the last Sunday of the month of November. Lift up your hands in thanksgiving. Let's go ahead and bless and worship him. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you once again for how you have preserved us, how you have preserved us from the beginning of the year, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November is right here, almost being concluded, and we're stepping in victory into December. Thank you. This has been a challenging year globally, but you've kept us. You've preserved us. You've honored us. You've given us. You've done mighty things. Father, we exalt your holy name. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. And once again, we're praying as the word of God has been taught today, that red revelation flow unhindered and uninterrupted in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' mighty in name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We may have our seat. We may have our seat. Welcome to church today. Just to let you know, you know, just to let you know, um, just very, very important, just to let you know um, two things. Number one, next Sunday, next Sunday is our Thanksgiving Sunday. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have Samuel Poso. We have Bukola Bex. We have Bidemi Olaoba. We have Chioma Jesus, we have so many people joining us to just make it a. I wanted to come, everyone. I wanted to put on your tradition, your Yoruba wear, your Igbo wear, your Hausa wear, whatever you wear in your place, your French wear, your South African wear. Even if you're joining online, put on your wears, and everyone should actually be in church. Glory to God. I want to ask you that make provisions a lot to be in the fourth or the first service. We have a lot of space in that service. It's mega Thanksgiving service, thanking God for all the Lord has done throughout this year and please remember that this week also we'll be fasting we'll be fasting we will be fasting we'll be fasting you know december the first or the third our you know our regular fast and the team of the team of the fast is three days of acceleration three days of acceleration somebody say hallelujah hallelujah and of course december the 12th we have our anniversary thanksgiving um service just to thank god for how good lord has brought us so far so i hope you'll be part of this in jesus name all right Let's turn in our Bibles. Let's turn in our Bibles quickly. You know, let's turn in our Bibles quickly. And I want to continue and finalize my teaching on spiritual tools for a quantum leap. Spiritual tools for a quantum leap. Let's read in Acts chapter 16 in verse 16. The Bible says that it came to pass as we went to pray, referring to Paul and those that went with him. A certain damsel, a certain lady possessed, watch this now, in retrospect, they said this lady was possessed. But the people that were there at that time did not know she was possessed. The Bible says a certain lady was possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought a master much gain. The Bible says this was a commercial activity. This was a spiritual gift that was leveraged as a commercial activity. He says that this lady brought her master much gain by soothsaying she could tell the future. The same followed Paul and us and cried saying, These are the servants of the Most High which had shown unto us the way of salvation. And this did many days, and Paul being grieved, turned and said to her, I command in the name of Jesus to come out of her, and he came out at the same hour. I want you to notice something, because as we speak about spiritual tools for a quantum leap, which is what our focus of teaching is about, one of the things I want you to notice is this, that this person, this lady had a demonic operation. The demonic operation will cause her to know things, and the people and masters knew her and they had developed some kind of commercial activity through this model. Why am I showing you why am I sharing this with you? The reason I'm showing this with you is for a simple reason. There is a way that you can understand the power of God and use it so proficiently to let to be to leverage it rather in all areas of life. These people just imagine what they were basically using was the power of Satan. And they had turned it into a commercial activity. That means if I understand the power of God, I can go to my office every month, every day, and be able to release a dimension of that power to make us move from where we are to the next level. And we can do it in a systematic, in a proficient way, 
and in an efficient manner. So as we speak about spiritual tools, I'm not talking about something that would happen to you once in a while. I'm talking about something that when you get the understanding of the spiritual tools, you can learn very well. Let's turn our Bible quickly so about spiritual laws. Numbers chapter 22, Numbers chapter 22 in verse 5. Numbers chapter 22 in verse 5. This the Bible says, and this the Bible says, so the king Balak, he sent messengers unto Balaam. Balaam was a prophet, the son of Beor to Pethor, which is by the, which is by the rivers of the land of the children of his people to call him, saying, what did he say? He said, behold, there is a people come from Egypt, whom behold, they covered the face of the earth, and they abide over and against me. See what he says. He says, come now, therefore, I pray you, curse me this people. Why did he say curse me? He said, for they are too mighty for me. But eventually, because you have cursed me, I shall prevail. What the king Balak was saying was very simple. In the natural, there is no way I can win this people. In the natural, there is no way I can get pregnant. In the natural, there is no way that this business that's done 10 million can move to 100 million. In the natural, there is no way I can get this job. The chances are not there that I can get the appointment. So, uh, Balaam, Balak the king have one of the two spiritual things. He understood something. That if we can put spiritual tools in place... That which was not possible naturally will become possible. So naturally, there is no place someone with a medical condition can get pregnant. Medical science, there is no way they can do that. But what he was saying was simple. He said that if you can get someone that understands spiritual authority and knows the use of spiritual tools and it deploys it, we can have a massive breakthrough. And that's why we're teaching this. What are we are teaching this? We're teaching this to say, no matter the limitations, no matter what you are, that you can leverage your understanding on deep biblical spiritual tools to be able to bring about a breakthrough. Maybe you have an age and at that age it's very difficult for any one of your age to be married. And people say this will be very difficult. In the natural, it is difficult and that's what the king understands. The king says that naturally I can achieve this. Naturally I can raise the capital. Naturally I can get the promotion. Naturally I can get the approval. He said but come and do something and what it will do will be from the realm of the spirit and that thing will begin to orchestrate situations and circumstances to make sure that the things I desire exactly happens. So when this is done, let me tell you something. What he was saying was this. This is what he's saying. Naturally, we can't get this done. Naturally, we can never win this. But if you can leverage your spiritual authority, sir, there will be a portal that will open. All of a sudden, there will be circumstances and events, situations and things like that that will make sure that the favor will come into our side. What am I saying to you? So naturally, it's impossible that you'll be the one to be picked up for the contract as the one as a contractor because of the leverage others have that you do not have. But as we bring in the law of the spirit, or those others have physical leverage, one spiritual tool step inside, there will be a diversion. There will be such an influence that will make those things come in your favor. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So the spiritual things will bring about such an influence. And let me say something to you. I told you the story of one of my closest family friends, actually the closest person I've known to my dad before both of them went to be of blessed memory. And this man served in one of the largest multinationals in Nigeria. And it was next to the CEO. And when it was time to replace the CEO, you know, um, for some reason, they didn't consider him to be the next CEO. I think they wanted some other white or European CEO. That's the culture. And he really got angry. And he says, why can't they pick me as the CEO? So you know what he told me? I mean, he was telling me this 40, 50 years after. He said, you will not believe this. I was going to Senegal every weekend. I went there for three months every weekend. I was going to see these witch doctors that could involve incarnation. I said, so what happened? I was fascinated by the story. He said, one day, my boss, the white CEO, it was when he got back to Europe that he told them that how I got back to Europe, I don't know. But I'm back in Europe now. I'm not going back to Nigeria. 
you know, this is a man that is a sensible man, master's PhD, run multinational organization, organizations in the billions of dollars, and spiritual tools was applied, and the man did not know how he packed his bag, how he packed his passport, how he bought his ticket. It was when he got back to Europe that he came to his senses and said, why am I here? And he told them in the office, I don't know why I'm here, but something is sure I'm not going back. That is how powerful spiritual tools are. When men say there's no waste, the spiritual will create an express. When men say there's no river, that this is a desert, the spiritual will create a river there. That's what the spiritual does. So maybe you are here and you're wondering that the year is over. It's a man that says it will take 30 days. With God, all things are possible. What you thought will take you one month can take God one day. What you thought will take you two weeks can take a minute with God. And that's why we need to learn how to use use this thing. In this teaching today, one of the things you will learn is this. You will learn why you do not need to come to a pastor, what you can do by yourself. Let's say your business is not going well. What can I do by myself as a spiritual man to be able to use a spiritual tool to resuscitate my business? Let's say my life is going upward and downward and I don't have consistent success. One of the things you will learn today is that what can I do to be able to have a life that is forward and progressive, not epileptic success? Let's say you have some kind of delay. Maybe it's a delay in marriage. Maybe it's a delay in childbirth. Maybe there's a delay in funding. How can I use spiritual tools? How can I activate spiritual laws to be able to hasten and speed in operation? Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. You know, the other day I was, you know, um, I was just watching a television show and this person had said that when he married this man, he was actually going to see a witch doctor. And this witch doctor was meant to help them. But eventually he got married. She found herself in a service and she got delivered. And by the time she went back home, I mean, she went back because of her senses, she discovered that, why am I with you? And, you know, the pastor said she invited the witch doctor. And the witch doctor actually confessed and said, there's no way a woman of this class can marry me. When she was coming to me to do certain kind of diabolical things, and that's why nobody should go to such places. He said, I used the opportunity to leverage it on her. I used witchcraft on her. And she married me not out of her senses because of a force was applied. And I'm saying to you, if these things can happen in the copycat region, in the negative supernatural, we have much more influence in the positive. The challenge is not because we don't have it. The challenge is that, number one, we do not know how to use it. Although there are powers and there are principles of supernatural, there are laws that guide the operation of this power. Let's look at one of those laws. So today I want to talk about, as the spiritual tools, Please go back and watch the services. I'm going to talk about some more. Today, I intend to talk about confession, thanksgiving, and honor. Confession, thanksgiving, and honor. As this are the spiritual tools. Look at something. Look at John chapter 6, verse 63. This is very powerful. John chapter 6, verse 63. John chapter 6, verse 63. <clears throat> See what it says here. It said, it is the spirit that quickeneth. When it says quickness there, the better word would be, you know, I don't know if they can give me another translation. He says, it is the spirit that gives eternal life. Well, this is not King James. I don't know if you can give me King James first. Then maybe give me NIV. He says, it is the spirit that quickeneth. Quickeneth means it is the spirit that giveth life. He said, the flesh profited nothing. What did he now say? He said, the words I speak to you, they are spirit and life. What does it mean when he said the spirit quickeneth? He said, the very life comes from the spirit. He said the flesh cannot give life. Let me give an example. I have this beautiful iPhone here. And as wonderful as this iPhone is, with all its capabilities and its up-to-date apps, if there is no SIM card inside, this iPhone cannot function as a phone. He may be able to be used as a calculator. He can be used as a camera. But its ultimate purpose of a phone cannot be used. Why am I saying this to you? Because the life is not in the phone, the body. The phone is the body. It says, he said the flesh profited nothing. It is the spirit that gives it life. What am I saying to you? When you do your strategies, all you are doing is body. When you are planning, 
planning for your growth, all you're doing is body. The very life that will bring about expansion comes from the spirit. When you are going into a meeting and you come out and you say, wow, we have the strong businessman. Remember, it's like that iPhone without the SIM card. You have to put the SIM card inside. He said the flesh profited nothing. The flesh profited nothing. It is the spirit spirit that give it life. So what we are saying that as you are going for the negotiation meeting, as you are, as you are talking about as you are talking about that to the doctors and going for that operation, some of you maybe are going for an IVF, as you are going through it, you must remember that the flesh profited nothing. Don't say that because of I know who I am, I know my onions. I know you know your onions, but the Bible says trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. He said the flesh profited nothing. I know the strategy is wonderful, but the flesh profited nothing. I know you've gotten the location right, but the flesh profited nothing. I know you have all the supporting documents to lead to contract, but the flesh profited nothing. I know you are very intelligent, but the flesh profited nothing. What makes it different? He said, it's the spirit that gives it life. The question now is this. Okay, pastor. I understand what you said. That the flesh profits nothing. That it's a spirit that gives life. So when I'm about to submit the proposal, when I'm going for the interview, when I'm about to submit the immigration document, what exactly do you want me to do? Look at it again. How do I give life? And this is where the spiritual tools come into place. How do I give life to natural process? This is what you're asking. How do I inject the power of God into a normal situation? How do I inject the power of God? The doctor says this and this about my health. How do I inject the power of God? I've moved now to Canada. I've moved to the UK. I've moved to the US. Things are not going the way it is. There are dreams I have. How do I inject the power of God to make sure my dreams can happen? So that by the end of this year, I will have something significant to rejoice about. John chapter 6. Same place we read. John chapter 6. Verse 63. He says, remember this. That it is the spirit that quickens. You know, it's the spirit that quickens. Let me say, this is the other extreme. The other extreme is this. Many people will just be doing, 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 doing. They will just be releasing power. You say, how far with the contract? I'm fasting for three days. I'm doing this for three nights. I'm declaring this. Listen to me, people. It says the spirit gives life. That means that, number one, for the supernatural to work, there must be not something natural there. Because the supernatural only gives life to what is in the flesh. What does that mean? If you are praying about a job... And you don't do what you have to do in the flesh. The supernatural will not be able to give life. When it gives life, there is no body for the life to function through. How do I mean? When God was going to make man, the first thing God was to do was this. He made the human body, then he breathed into his nose. The natural was there and God put in the breath. That was the supernatural. So, everyone here, whatever you're praying about, let's say you're praying about marriage, you need to do the things that will make you marriageable. If you don't know what to do, you need to learn it. Let's say you're praying about a job, you need to do the things that will make you employable. Let's say you're praying about growth and scaling, you need to put your house in order. Those are the natural things you do. And as you do that when you begin to pray you are releasing the life of the spirit into those things the challenge with most people is that they are not doing the physical but they are releasing spiritual power so spiritual power is released but there's no channel or avenue where that power can be what dimension or diffused into so you see them, they are stranded. That's why a lot of Christians are stranded. They are praying about their job, but there's nothing in the physical that the power can rest upon. They are praying about their expansion in business. They are not doing advertisement. They are not doing marketing. There's no strategic plan. There's nothing the power of God can rest upon. They are praying about their immigration status, and there are some key steps they have to take. And they are praying, and there's nothing the power of God can rest upon. If the power of God is going to rest upon you, he said, the spirit quicken it. The spirit will quicken what is already there. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Let's read John. So remember that um, if you are the kind of person, and this is what happens to people. Most people want to do some kind of project. They bump into the project and they have their injured. 
They are injured because firstly, they don't understand the way this thing works. You take your project and begin to ask God to grant you wisdom and strategic direction. See what it says again in John chapter 6 verse 35. It is the spirit that quickens it. It's the spirit that brings a life. It's the bring that brings a progress. The flesh profited nothing. Now, it tells us how the spirit brings life. He said, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and life. So, the first thing I want you to understand is this. That words are spiritual and they are life. One of the spiritual tools we must understand is the power of words. Is the power of words. In the realm of the spirit, the most superior words are God's word. But the power of words. He says, how do you give life to something? He said, the word I speak at what? At living. He said, they are living and active. They are spiritual in their life. He said, the flesh profit nothing. He said, but the spirit give it life. He said, the word I speak to your life. So, how do you give what? How do you give life to a business? By speaking to the business. How do you give life to a body? By speaking to the body. How do you give life to your marital dream? By speaking to your marital dream. How do you give life to your approval? By speaking to your approval. In the physical, you are arranging the paper, sending the papers for approval. But in the spiritual, you are speaking what? Behind the scene, life is being given. As the flesh is going, there is an activation of life being given. This thing I'm telling you is very powerful. And I'm going to use some, to, I'm going to use, let, let me even help you with this. My, my mom had, um, had kids late. She was probably married for about 10 or, 15, 10 or 10 years plus before she had her first child. And when she had her first child, it was just, she was blown away. And my auntie told me this because my auntie said she was with her when she was having the child. And when they brought the child to my mom, she had the CS. My mom looked at the child, which is my older sister, our firstborn, and said something. He said, is this my child? Did this actually come out of me? Because, of course, she passed out during the CS. And she said, ah, will I be alive to see her wedding? I'm telling you, this is in the hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, my first, you know, I have an older sister and an older. My firstborn is, an old, is a lady after a brother than myself. You know, the way life will have it, I married first. My, my brother married second. My, my sister married third, last. Just, we just went the other way of marriage. And this is what happened. Exactly one week to my sister's wedding, my mother died. When my mother died, my auntie came. She broke down the floor and began to cry. He said, she said this thing 40 years ago. He said, she said it. She said, will I be able to see this? You don't understand. The word you speak are life. You are either putting life in something or you are killing something. There's a man, very renowned man called Charles Caps, and um, you know, Charles Caps said something very powerful. What did he say? He said, when I'm going to die, I'm going to die on a Sunday. I'm going to die at this age. And this. He said, I'm going to preach the service. I'm going to go home, sleep and die. Exactly two or three years ago, Charles Cap died. And guess what? how he died? He died exactly the way he said it. He preached. And the reason why is it? I'm just showing the power of words. Sometimes he says, this is what the book of Proverbs says, and you can look for the scripture and put it online for me. He says, you are held captive by your words, and you are set free by your words. When you say nobody, he said, when you tell yourself, and when I say words, words are not just what you say on the outside, words are also what you say on the inside, because there are two kinds of mouth. There is the internal dialogue, there is the outer, outer dialogue. Many Christians, what they've done is that they've mastered the act of speaking outside well, but on the inside, the internal dialogue is destructive and is defeating so this is what they will see on the outside it is well but on the inside who will marry me you know and when you say so what you are doing is this you are speaking death to your marital dream are you here somebody um there was a there was a survey that was done recently and um in this survey that was done recently um they took the last words of people in the plane crash. And guess what they noticed? The people in the graveyard, all their words was about death. As the plane was going to crash, we're doomed, we're finished. Oh my God, this is the end of us. Oh God. And, you know, and people are using the F word, the swear word, all of those kind of things. And they did not understand that those words was enabling because words are powerful. What are words? What are words? Words are containers. Please, will you come, Sam? Will you bring those things for me, please? Words are containers. 
let me show you what I mean by words are containers. Let me show you what I mean when I say words are containers. Can you help me get a spoon if possible and a cup? This is what I mean that words are containers. This is a tin of milk. This is a tin of milk. This is a tin of milk. Let me show you. It's a tin of milk. When, what, see, when I buy this, I don't see the milk. All I see is the tin of milk. But the tin of milk contains the milk. Your words contain what you say. So when I open the tin of milk, the reason why I have milk, look at this, I have milk, is what? Because that was what it was containing. When you speak the word of depression, the words of depression contains depression. In fact, so many people, they are go to what is I'm depressed. They are go to what is I'm overwhelmed. You don't realize that saying those words is making you more depressed, is making you more overwhelmed. Because words are carriers. The same way this tin of milk contains milk, it, this tin of milk contains milk, your words contains the things you are saying. If I open this tin of milk to this, this time around, and in this tin of milk, guess what I saw? If I saw, if I saw sugar, sugar is good, but it, it can be contained here because this is not meant to contain sugar. Most of you are what? You are saying milk, but what you want is sugar. You are saying coffee, but what you want is sugar. Your words are containers. Words are vehicles. They contain exactly what you said. What you have today is what you said yesterday. What you said yesterday is what you have tomorrow. Words. Look at this now. Look, this is a pack of sugar. It's a pack of cube sugar. If I open this pack right now, all I find is I sugar because the, this is just a packet. It's carrying sugar. Words carry what you say. Nobody will marry me, then nobody will marry you. Everything is difficult. Everything becomes difficult because in the realm of the spirit, words are tools. Words are tools in the realm of the spirit. Words are tools in the realm of the spirit. Words are tools in the realm of the spirit. You know, um, even in science, I saw this, you know, science thing done. They took two plants and they put them apart. Two same plants in different places. And they will say to one plant, you are good, you're fruitful, you're productive, positive words. They'll say to the one, you're useless, you're dying, you're ineffective. After six months, guess what happened? The one they spoke negative words to all died. The one they spoke positive words to all survived. That's how powerful words are. Do you have the cup and spoon for me? Glory to God. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Let's turn in our Bible. Let's turn in our, Let me just show you something quickly. Look at Numbers chapter 13. Look at Numbers chapter 13. Words are very powerful. Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13, verse 33. See what the Bible says here. See what the Bible says here. He says, we saw the giant, the son of Anak, which were other giants, and we were in our sight as grasshoppers. That was what they saw. That was what they said. And so were we, what? In their sight. I told you that words are containers. So guess what? When I speak, everybody look, here, look up here now. Every time here. This is, this is my life. Watch this now. This is my life. This is what? This glass is my life. This glass is my life. Okay, you have a spoon for me? I can, get, I can use the spoon. Thank you. This is my life. I, I love the fact that the glass is transparent. What is in my life? Watch this now. As I put, if I speak milk, then milk will come into my life. Milk will come into my life. If, if I take a moment and I don't speak milk, and what I begin to speak, I begin to speak some other things, you know, the other things is going to come into my life. Let's agree that this is that color. This is evil. It's going to come into my life. The question is that your life is full of the words you speak. So what am I saying? 
you keep telling yourself, let me tell you things you say yourself. I can't do this. Your life is full of I can't. I'm always unhappy. Your life is full of that. Nobody loves me. Your life is full of that. You know, your life is full of the things you say. If you want to change your life, you must empty out your life and start speaking new words. Listen to me. Some people want their life to be full of sugar, but they keep putting up debt there. Some people want their business to be full of great things, but they see keeping up death there. Glory to God. Did you see the word they said? They wanted to win the battle, and they said that we were like grasshoppers. The Bible says, and so we were. You know what the Bible says in the book of Ephesians 6 about the word? The Bible says the word of God is the sword of the spirit. Hallelujah. This is not a sword, this is a matcha though. He said the word of God is what is the sword of the spirit. The word of God is what is the sword of the spirit. What does this mean? <laughs> I love this. In the realm of the spirit, the way we fight battle is by words. Did you notice in the whole of the, new, in the, whole of the armor of righteousness, there was just one, offensive, one weapon that is offensive. There's one weapon that you can use to fight. All the other weapons is defensive. You protect yourself. There's one weapon we use to fight. What is the weapon? The word of God. Doctor says you can't have a child. How do you cut out the fiber with the word? They say that you, your business not grow. How do you break the barrier with the word? The word of God is a weapon. It's a weapon. It's a sword of the spirit. Are you here somebody? I don't know if you are here. Say amen. It's a sword of the spirit. They say you can't have a child. You'll get to the word and you say, the Bible says, none shall be barren. <laughs> you, know, you know what comes to my mind? I don't know if you ever watched these shows when you were younger. Um, it's, uh, it's Robin Wood. And, you know, Robin Wood will come out of the woods and, you know, the, you know that, that thing is so wonderful and you're just fighting the devil and you're just fighting the devil and just fighting the devil that way. Question, do you realize that your words are spiritual tools? Your words can become the instrument that used to hold your business down because of all the negative confession you've been saying. Your words can become the tools that say can used to hold your family down because of the negative things you say. You say, in our family, nobody is rich. Can you hear? No, sir. Say what the word of God says. The Bible says, my family is blessed. With your words, you tear down. With your word, you cancel. With your word, you demolish. With your word, it's the sword of the spirit, praise God. The Bible says, this is a sword. And the word of God is the sword of the spirit. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. How do you apply this to yourself? Very powerful. How do you apply this to yourself? Find what the Bible says about your business. When you go back to work, you begin to declare, I'm like a tree planted by the rivers of water. What are you doing? In the realm of the spirit, you are taking your sword and you're making warfare. They say, there's recession. You said, no, I'm like a tree planted. Oh, glory to God. I'm like a tree planted. Hallelujah. Hey, praise God. Doctor says, I'm sorry. You know, this is wrong with your health. You say, doctor, I've heard you. But the Bible said that my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Sickness cannot stay here. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. It's the temple of the Holy Ghost. As you're growing older, things seem to be going downwards. They say, that's how it goes down in the family. When people grow older, they start losing their money. You said, not me. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 17. The path of the righteous. He's like, you take out your sword. You pull your sword. You say, this is a sword. The Bible says the path of the righteous. He's like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter. See the perfect day. Yeah. Somebody say, hallelujah. hallelujah. The sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit. Your words are spiritual tools. See, if you know that you have a spiritual tool, use it intentionally. Don't use it against yourself. Have things you say about your life every day. Have things you say about your business every day. So, how do I use the word? I will tell you what I do. If you're going for a project, if you're believing for a baby, write down something. Write it based on what the Bible says. And begin to declare it every day. Every day when you declare it, it's like taking the sword of the spirit and you are cutting down something. You know when you want to cut a tree? It's not at the first cut the tree falls. You keep cutting it on the tree gets weaker and it falls apart. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. 
Someone say hallelujah. We are taking the sword of the spirit which is what? The word of God. The sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit. Someone says I will harm you. Say no. No weapon fashion. See when they tell you you say your own back. It's the sword of the spirit. Let me say something to you. Many of may, you may don't understand this. Did you notice? Most of you think that it was God that gave Job over to Satan. That's not what the Bible says. Let's read Job. Job chapter 1. Most people think it was God. No, it was not God that gave Job over to Satan. It was Job's words that gave Job over to Satan. Hmm. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Job chapter 1. Verse 11. Bless you from verse 10. Verse 9. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Do what Job fear you for nothing? As thou that not made an edge. God says you put an edge all around about him, about his house, and on him on every side. And thou hast blessed the works of his hand, and his substance is greatly increased in the land. Verse 11 says, Put forth now thy hands, and touch all thy hands, and it will curse you. And the Lord said to him, See, see, Verse 12, let's read together. Look what it was saying. And the Lord said unto Job, Behold, all that he had is in what? Did you see that? God told Satan, It's already in your power. How? Because the book of Job, chapter 3, says that Job was always fearful and always saying the wrong things. So Satan already knew that Job was in his power. Listen, God did not say, I give Job into your hands. He said, the truth is this. All that Job has is already in your hands. Many of you are here. Through your words, all you have is already in the hands of the enemy. It's time to take it back. If through your word you gave it away, through your word you take it back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the tools we use is words. And let me tell you, this is a problem with this is a problem with confession. Many people speak words, they speak today, tomorrow, by next week they are forgotten. No, sir. The way confession works, it works like antibiotics. You must be regular in the use of it. You must be regular in the use of it. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. As I close this morning, I will talk about the power of confession and of thanksgiving. Oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. Let me say something to you. Job, let me just say this to you. This will help a lot. Job chapter 2, verse 7 to 10. Job chapter 2, verse 7 to 10. So that's a Job, I mean Jonah chapter 2, verse 7 to 10. So I want to say to you this quickly. If your life is not going so well, what should you do exactly? Let me read to you. Jonah had made a big mistake and he had gotten backwards. See what Jonah said in verse 7. And my soul fainted within me and I remember the Lord. He said, when things were very tough, I remember the Lord. And my prayer came into, into thee, into thy holy tabernacles. And it says something, verse 8. It said, they that observe lying wonders for take their mercy. What did Jonah say? Jonah said, I was in the place of depression. I began to pray, but it says, they that observe, look, focus on, lying wonders, forsake their mercy. It says, although I was a place of depression, I took my eyes over the things that depressed me. Why am I saying that to you? Maybe you're running a business and you're running into debt. You have to close those things that remind you of the debt. Why? The more you look at the negative, the more negative it becomes. The more you look at the negative, the more negative it becomes. This is why I say it. You don't watch what you don't want because you become what you watch. You don't watch what you don't want. Many of you are here. There's a negative report that you're looking at. Your bank account is just below 2000 You keep looking at the account as if it will change. The more you watch it, the more you will sink financially. Job 
says, I was in the belly of the fish, and what I did was simple. I said to myself, they that observe lying vanities forsake their mercy. He said, if I keep looking at what is not working, I will forsake mercy. If I keep looking for those feedback and say, how is the contract? And they say, ah, you are number 10. He said, you will forsake your mercy. The reason why many of you have lost your mercy is this. You keep looking at what is not working. You keep looking at what is wrong. You keep looking at the opposing force and you sink. He says, they that, let me teach you something. They that what? Observe lying vanity forsake your mercy. If you don't want to lose mercy in that contract, you shut your ears to what they are saying about how your position is 15 among 150 people. You shut your ears to what they're saying. You, if you don't want to lose your mercy, you close your ears to what the doctor is saying about how you cannot have a child. You are now 42. You are not married. You close your ears because you do not want to lose your mercy. Why? They that observe lying vanities. Lying vanities are things that they, they forsake their mercy. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. See what the Bible says here. He says, they that observe lying vanity forsake their mercies, but I will sacrifice unto thee. He says, instead of me to be looking at what's not working, he says, I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay the vow I vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Look at what he says. He says, not only will I just pray, I will not look at lying vanity, then I will go into a place of sacrificial thanksgiving. The next thing that happened, verse 10, and God spoke unto the fish, and he vomited Job on the dry place. What does that mean? Every time you're stuck, every time things are not working, if you can close your eyes to what's not working, these are spiritual tools, and you begin to go into a place of thanksgiving, what will happen? God will command the fish to vomit you out. Many of you, your finance seems to be in the fish. Some of you, it's a job that is in the fish, and it needs to be vomited out. One of the things Thanksgiving does is this. Thanksgiving activates the power of God for that thing to happen. So in Thanksgiving, the first thing Thanksgiving does is this. It keeps you positive. What do I mean? Look at Jesus Christ. This is what the Bible says. Look at what, this is what the Bible says. This is what the Bible says. Bible speaks of Jesus Christ. They had five loaves and two fishes. It was not enough to do anything. Jesus took the five loaves. He did not complain. Many of you, if something happens right now, you are paying for 10 million, you'll get 200,000 error. You say, what is this nonsense? Maybe, you know, maybe you're praying for, maybe you're praying for marriage and you're, maybe you're just still dating. You say, I thought I'll be married and you're just angry. Jesus Christ did not complain about what happened. Rather, it was grateful. Someone say, I thought I'll be married, but you are alive. That's why you're married. Be grateful for life. Someone says that I thought that would have expanded to 1 billion, but right now you're at 500 million. Be grateful for that. Someone says, I thought I would have moved abroad, but at least your application and process be grateful for that someone says that you know this and this but at least you have migrated to the to, to the u.s or to canada be grateful for that the, you know why there's something about being grateful for where you are that he opens the door for the next thing jesus took the five loaves and the two fishes and it did not blame god it did not fight god he said father i thank you it's only the people that are forgetful that that become ungrateful I'm telling you, because this was not where you were. That was something where you were before. And Thanksgiving is a powerful spiritual tool. You know why? Everything you thank God for, the multiplying power of God falls upon it. Everything you thank God for, what happens? The multiplying power of God falls upon it. Next week is our Thanksgiving service. I have some guidance for you. Everyone while you're coming next week, you will get a piece of paper. Write three things that the Lord has done for you. When it's time for Thanksgiving, the reason why you, your mind cannot be empty and be thankful. No, sir. If you are really going to be thankful, there will be things you will thank God for. You will write three things the Lord has done for you in 2021. And you will begin to thank him. Because the way he has done number one, number two, number three, the other things you're not written, he will also do it. The second thing you will do is that you will write it and come with a deep heart of what of debt. Thanksgiving comes from the heart of a debtor. Every time you feel as if that I could have done it by myself, you will never thank God. Have you seen people that are not very grateful? People that are not very grateful are people that thought, I want it, I merit it. Why should I be grateful? But the people that are very grateful know that this was not my effort. This was not my power. This is by the grace of God. And that is the heart you must have. And the third thing is this. When you come with place of thanksgiving, you come with your thanksgiving offering. 
and sacrifices. You know, I, I was saying to church, I said, people will go to a cinema and watch a cinema for 10,000 tickets for two people. When it's time for Thanksgiving offering, they don't remember, they just put their hands in their pocket and put thousand dollars in the envelope. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not, a Thanksgiving offering is not just an offering. It's a, something you must plan. And say, Lord, ha, I got married this year. I got a promotion this year. If I give you less than 200,000 there, I know I've done this justice. I've done injustice. Because I know Thanksgiving is a thing of weight. God has preserved you, preserved your family, promoted you. All these things happen. God kept you. And all you have to do is Thanksgiving. He said, where's my offering? No. It's Thanksgiving offering, not what you look for in church on Sunday. It's something you prepare for. That we are coming to thank God. The reason why is that you should not give your Thanksgiving thoughtlessly or carelessly. You should give it with full intention to show appreciation to God. Some of you might just be able to say that, you know what, Lord, for what you've done for me in my career, this is the first time I'll give a million naira in my Thanksgiving. This is the first time I'll give a 50,000 naira, 10,000 naira in my thanksgiving, just because of that perspective. And this is what the Bible says. As Jonah began to thank God in the belly of a village, which is a spiritual tool, every time your life is not going well, if you can spend time to thank God and give, you will see it explode. Let's stand up and pray. Lift up your hands and let's go ahead and pray. Give him thanks, give him praise. With your mouth, I want you to use your words to create your future. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your word. Thank you for the city sown in our heart. In Jesus' mighty name, I declare every warfare against you is cancelled. We, we declare that everything you thank God for will multiply. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. At this time, we're going to give our tithe and offering at this time, and we'll lead it from there.